Right, so we're joined by Mike from the Rookery End, the Watford podcast. So Newcastle are, are hosting Watford at the weekend in, in the fourth round of the FA Cup there. So, Mike, first question. Your previous game in the FA Cup, it was against a, a, a league side, so, so not the, the, the greatest quality of a team who you're up against. And you, you did manage to get a 2-0 away win with a, quite a mixture of senior players and, and players from the youth team in the academy. How do you think Watford are going to set up coming up on Saturday? I'd expect them to set up very, very similarly. I think um, uh, there's a doubt. Cleverly's back in the in the first team frame now, so you might not see him um, on Saturday at St James's. But I think Watford will will line up pretty much the same way they did it away at Woking. And yeah, yeah, you mentioned that game. It was a bit of a bit of a non-event, but for for us Watford fans, that's the best we could have hoped for in a in a tie like that. The only way that's going to make the headlines is if if Watford hit ten or if Woking beat us. So for us to to go through without anyone talking about it uh, was perfect, and I think those guys have uh, have earned another tilt at the at the fourth round in uh, what should be a really interesting match. Yeah, so so looking back at that that game against Wogan, like like I said, it passed a lot of people by. I didn't even realise he was up against Wogan. There wasn't much of media frenzy around it. Like I say, if he had been on the, on the a defeat in that game, then of course, of course it would have got the media attention there because normally Newcastle United that go against these non-league teams, <laughs> normally us that get knocked out against them. But like you say, there was a mixture of players. So, so you did have the likes of, of Hughes in there who got a goal. You had Cleverly playing. And you did have ex-Newcastle United player, Dan, Daryl Yanma playing as well. So it was quite a mixture there. And it was the two senior lads who, who got the goals for you. It was Hughes and Troy Deeney, if I remember correct. That's right. Yep. So do you think Troy Deeney, Troy Deeney's been linked with Newcastle United over the years. Or God knows how many years now. He keeps getting linked with us every single transfer window. Is is Deeney still getting his regular game against uh, for Watford, or is it just a case where he's Biff Parson and he comes on as a substitute these days? No, no, he came on as a sub in in that game. He replaced yeah. Isaac Success, who was he's struggling really. He's one that's sort of drinking in the last chance saloon, really. I think when it comes to, uh, to Watford, but Deeney came on with twenty minutes to go and uh, and got that got that goal. Um, but no, he's far from far from past it. He's still absolutely vital to Watford. Um, mm. He he's big, he's strong. Um, he gets the crowd going. Um, he holds the ball up well. Um, he winds up the opposition. Um, he he's still got it. Uh, he's on a decent run of form. Uh, whether we'll see him on on Saturday, I think I'd be surprised if we didn't see him on the bench because he can come on and and grab the mm. game by the scruff of the neck. So if we do need um, does need a bit of shaking up, then then Troy can come on and do that. I'd, I'd be surprised to see him start, but he's absolutely vital for us still. Um, I don't think he's passed it. I think if he plays for Watford next year, that'll be his 10th season at the club. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's testament to um, the just the, the effort he's given Watford and the, and the performances he's, he's managed to turn in. I wouldn't have thought there'd be many people, probably Watford fans included, who would have expected Deeney to, to be performing so well after Watford got promoted, what, uh, was mm-hmm. that fourth season in this stint in the Premier League. And, um, him and Nagalo had that amazing season the, the first year, and yeah, I think the fact that he's still doing it at the at the top um, at, and in the top division for Watford uh, says a lot about his character, a lot about his talent. I think he's underrated as a player. I think you know he he, he speaks his mind, so a lot of people enjoy hearing him in the media, and um, people know he's a bit of a you know he's a bit of a lad, isn't he? He's one of those yeah. guys. Um, but I think he, you underrate how, how how decent he is. He's a decent finisher if he gets a chance. Um, he's strong and he gets up well. He's he bullies defenders, so um, yeah, I think he, he, he's fantastic for us. And I'd like to see us. I'd like to see him keep us for another year. Keep stay at Watford for another year. Do his ten years, and then I think um, the sensible money's on him disappearing off to uh, Birmingham. Is uh, is the the team he supports? Mm. So looking from the outside, and I would imagine Troy Dean is a type of similar player to to what we have in our squad. Rondon up top. He's he's that powerful striker who who he brings everyone else into the game. Really, he's there, like you said, he's there to hold the ball up. And he's got a decent finish on the end. He bodies defenders, and I think that's probably similar to what we've got with Rondon at the minute. And like you're saying, you'd be surprised if you see see Deeney start. And I think we're under the same impression. We'd be very shocked to see to see Rondon playing in this game, a game which Newcastle United. To be honest with you, I can't imagine them taking it too seriously. It'll be a very similar team to the one which we fielded against Blackburn. So, so just like Watford, it was a mixture of academy players and a few of the fringe players. Wasn't really many first team players starting apart from, from centre midfield, where we're on the bones of what asked, to be completely honest with, with mm-hmm. centre midfield players. You've got Shelby injured, Diomi injured. You've got Kay, who's just been returned from the Asian Cup there, injured as well. So we've got the likes of Hayden in centre midfield, and we've also got uh, Sean Longstaff, who, who's came from the academy, and he's impressed since he, he's came in the last few games. 
areas of the pitch, where do you think, where do you would expect this to be won? I think Watford will probably have a bit of quality in midfield. Um, I mean, you mentioned it's a mixture of academy. There's not really that much um, in the way of academy players in that squad. It's, I think, one of the benefits that um, that Watford have got um, is is the depth of their squad. There really is some some quality that might not be that that well known outside outside Hertfordshire. But there's people like Chalabar in midfield. Um, there's Domingos Quina, who is a a midfielder who we picked up for for a million quid from from West Ham. Who looks every inch the the Premier League player already? Um, so those two in in midfield, and the the other guy that would be fascinating to see if he plays is uh, is Penyaranda, um, who we've had um, he's, and we've had real issues getting a um, getting a uh, a work permit for, but he's mm-hmm. finally got that through and he made his debut against Woking. Incredibly difficult place to make your debut. I don't yeah, care of who, who you are. It's, it's a really weird um, situation to to find yourself in. So it'd be fascinating to see. Um, see if he he plays up at, uh, at St James's at the weekend, and I think if he does, you guys might be in for a treat. You might enjoy seeing him. Um, but I think that midfield area um, going forward as well, um, success Isaac success we mentioned him earlier. There's a there's a talented player in there, but he's definitely definitely struggling for confidence. Um, so if he gets going, he can bully defenders. Um, so I think midfield. Watford are probably stronger than than some Newcastle fans might might expect. No, yeah, uh, not casting aspersions on on Newcastle's knowledge of our, our squad. Why would you know anything about it? But exactly. <laughs> I, I think some of those guys are, are are decent, and I think hopefully I'm hopeful that's where um, that's where it might swing in our favour. Because the other thing, of course, is that touch wood, it looks like we're safe from from relegation for another year, and are, are going to spend the rest of the season hopefully looking up the table as opposed to down it. So we can really give the the FA Cup some serious attention because you know we're desperate to, to to win a trophy whereas I guess for Rafa um it's probably an unwelcome distraction at this this stage of the season unfortunately so hopefully hopefully it'll be a strong side from Watford um and and it'll be a good game I hope it's a good game because I like to see good games in this tournament I think it needs it um but I'm really hopeful that Watford can give it a good go and uh, we we owe you one really I think this year as well we had uh, we, we I think we were probably shot ourselves in the foot a bit when we gifted you your first win of the season earlier on in the season and then um, yeah. we got beaten up a bit at, at Vicarage Road you guys did well great goal from Rondon I was hugely impressed with him there I have to say I thought Rondon was absolutely mm. was brilliant at Vicarage Road so you've won one we've drawn one hopefully uh, hopefully for us it'll be a Watford win this time. Yeah, so you just touched on it there. Watford are sitting seventh in the league, if I remember correctly, at the moment in the Premier League. There, there's there's no signs like you mentioned. There's no signs of relegation coming anytime soon for Watford. Newcastle are at the other end of that. We're, we're sitting fighting relegation, fighting to stay in the Premier League. From the outside in, can you see Newcastle United again relegated this season? I think there's teams worse, aren't there? Um, I think. I think Cardiff are going to be in difficulty. Huddersfield are, are, are going to struggle, uh, and Fulham look like they're they're toast as well, don't they? That that yeah. kick in the guts that that they had against Tottenham. You know, we've both been there as supporters of our teams. When you recognise, don't you? You see the warning signs of a relegation season, and I think and they're I think those... the headlines for the wrong reasons as well. Right now, with with one of their players getting kicked out of the training ground, he's not allowed back in for the foreseeable future. It's been a terrible, terrible season for for Fulham, hasn't it? Um, it really has been um, not good. And it was as as Watford fans, we were watching with interest because they started the season with uh, Slavisa Jakanovic, who of course got us promoted, and then we got mm. uh, got a bit of stick for sacking him before the the season yeah. started. But it, it looked like we made the right decision. So, I mean, obviously the problem that I have, you know, my dad's actually was was born in Jarrow, so I have a bit of a uh, really? I keep an eye on what on what's going up there in the on the northeast. Um, and I just feel sorry for for Newcastle fans because it just feels if they do stay up, it's it's just masking over what are clearly some pretty big issues there because uh, mm. you guys don't want to be looking, you don't guys don't want to be staying in the Premier League just because the three three sides worse than you. Um, and quite frankly, that's that's kind of the, see, it feels like that's the way it is at the moment. You're just sort of not staying up by default. There's some decent players there, and and you, you've beaten you've got four points of us this season, so um, you've obviously got some quality, but. I don't see you going down, but you want to be making progress as opposed to sort of treading water, which it feels like that's that's what's happening for me at the moment. Right. So finally, the connection is a little bit poor at the moment. So a final question, the score prediction, what, what are you going to go with? I'm going to go with, uh, I think Newcastle will take an early lead, but then Watford will roar back, uh, silence the uh, silence the crowd. It'll be 3-1 to Watford, I think, and we'll be on to the, onto the fifth round, I'm afraid to say. Hopefully you are wrong. If I'm going to put a score prediction on it now, 
I'm going to go with the draw, and I think there'll be another leg to go to this as well. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's at least that we need at the moment. It's probably the, the last thing you need at the moment, but I can see it being a draw, and we're having to go down a victory draw and, and try again there. Well, I'll take that, and uh, maybe we'll talk again if uh, if that happens. No worries, right? Last thing, I, I do appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much, and all the best for the rest of the season. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you. Yes.